What's up guys, my name is Tristan from the CPAPstore.ca and we just made a video on what happens to your body with sleep apnea. So I went over a sleep study and went over, you know, your heart rate, your oxygen rate, what does SpO2 mean, AHI, all that fun stuff. We got a comment though and said, yeah, that's great, but what about the long-term side effects of sleep apnea? So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video, what happens on your body with sleep apnea, part two, long-term effects. I do really recommend watching the first video if you like how to read a sleep report because um, I'm just gonna assume that you know that when you have sleep apnea, your oxygen levels dip a lot, okay? They can dip to 70%, they can dip to 80%, okay, which is really bad on your body. And your heart rate to correspond with that shoots up really high. In my dad's example, he was getting 79% oxygen saturation at times, which is very low. That's like Mount Everest low. He was getting like heart rate of 120 beats per minute at times, okay? So that's pretty fast for someone lying down. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about three things in your body, okay? First one's gonna be brain, second one's gonna be heart, and third one's gonna be body as a whole. Lots of times your body will pick one. So some people with sleep apnea won't feel tired and they'll have these other symptoms. Some people will feel really tired but not have the other symptoms. Typically most people will snore, that's almost like a base level one, uh, but then your body's gonna pick one of these symptoms or maybe two or three of these symptoms, maybe all of them. Um, so hopefully this video will help you out if you need to send it to a loved one or if you're just wanting to know for yourself or if you just need extra motivation to continue CPAP therapy. Okay, brain. So the slogan I came up with the brain is, is if your brain was talking, it says, don't worry, I'm gonna find energy elsewhere. So when you have sleep apnea, one of the symptoms is mood disorders. That's depression, anxiety, it can be increased OCD tendencies, increased ADHD tendencies, um, irritability, nightmares, okay? So that is kind of what your mood disorders are gonna look like on sleep apnea. Because of that, you're gonna be a lot higher risk for Alzheimer's disease as well as just increased or accelerated cognitive decline, okay? Which is gonna be your long-term symptom. Now, the reason why that is the case is because, like I said, some people don't feel tired even though they have sleep apnea. Well, why is that? Because the brain and the body is trying to figure out how to get energy or save energy, and it might be doing it in other places. So instead of your body feeling tired, it's gonna maybe take away from the brain's activities. When I say the brain's activities, I'm talking about the limbic system, hippocampus, which is gonna be, typically you're gonna be your memory, then you're gonna have amygdala, which is gonna be your anxiety or mood kind of, uh, regulation and then you're also going to have your prefrontal cortex which is like emotional regulation okay so and um, your brain might on sleep apnea take away from those areas or save energy in those areas or just misfire in those areas to compensate for the fact that you're feeling tired so a lot of times uh, patients will go to their doctor and they have sleep apnea they don't know it so they'll talk to their uh, doctor about the symptoms that they have and, and they're saying they're irritable and they have anxiety, depression. And oftentimes if they don't say they're tired, the doctor will misdiagnose them, tell them to go to a psychiatrist and then they get on like SSRIs or antidepressant medications, ADHD medication, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, it's just undiagnosed sleep apnea, believe it or not, and they shouldn't be taking those ADHD drugs to begin with. Um, but it's the fact that they're not getting enough sleep and the body's compensating in the brain. So if your partner is snoring, for example, and you say, hey, I think you have sleep apnea and say, no, I'm not tired. Maybe some of these issues are issues they have, for example, do they get irritated easily? Uh, do random things annoy them? When they watch the news, for example, do they just take in the news or do they get like frustrated about the news and like emotionally distraught over the news? Road rage is another one, maybe getting irritated about what other people say or do for no real reason, like, you know, someone like moves something in the kitchen and all of a sudden they're all fired up about it. Those are some things that might happen with sleep apnea that you might not normally Think. So that sums up sleep apnea in the brain, depression, anxiety, irritability, nightmares, accelerative cognitive decline, 
Alzheimer's and other mood disorders. Okay, now let's go to the heart. Okay, the slogan that I've made for the heart is let's go to war. That is what your heart's doing when you go to bed. It's kind of like that scene in 300s when all the Spartans are like getting ready for battle. Okay. Remember this day, man, for it will be yours for all time. Lay down your weapons. Come and get them. That's what the amount of stress your heart is going into because every night it doesn't know if it's gonna get a steady flow of oxygen and therefore your beats per minute or your heart rate is gonna be all over the place. If you look at this, for example, like it's crazy. Why is this an issue or what are the symptoms in the heart then? It's high blood pressure, okay, or hypertension. Uh, and then there's heart attack, arrhythmias, and stroke, okay? So heart attack, stroke, that's the long-term effect. And then the short-term effect is gonna be your hypertension, your high blood pressure. Now with sleep apnea, because of the stress hormones that are being released at night when your body's under stress because it can't breathe and it's not getting oxygen, uh, those stress hormones are gonna remain in your body throughout the day. So at night when you stop breathing and have an apnea, your oxygen kind of falls quite quickly. That's gonna trigger a lot of stress hormones. It's gonna trigger your blood vessels to constrict, to heighten your blood pressure, to get oxygen flowing to where it needs to be. And that kind of repeated cycle that is often happening hundreds and hundreds of times per night, uh, that system is gonna kind of be going all day and your body's kind of continue kind of that stressful response throughout the entire day. The reason why that's a problem is if during the day you're having typically higher blood pressure and a lot more strain on the arterial walls, at night when you have the big surges, the high blood pressure and the low oxygen, you know, up and down, up and down throughout the night, uh, that's really, actually, that's really hard on your arterial walls and that can cause plaque buildup, okay? So because of your straining your walls and stressing them out, it can cause a plaque to build more easily and therefore you can have heightened cholesterol, okay? Now, when those plaque buildups uh, release, they typically are gonna make the blood vessel smaller, right? Which is then gonna cause a, a clog with the red blood cells, okay? And that is basically a heart attack. When there's no flow going to your you know, arteries is what you have a heart attack. And that's why so many people have heart attacks at night. Now you might not notice it you know, within your family or whatever, because you, you don't, probably don't know hundreds of people, but do you ever notice that when you read the news and some random celebrity dies, some actor, or some wrestler or whatever, some athlete dies in their sleep, Ever notice that they're always dying in their sleep and it's always a heart attack? Putting two to two together, putting sleep apnea as one of the biggest causes for heart attacks, it's easy to see what happens when you know, you're having weakened arteries, when you're having plaque buildup, when you're having these huge surges of blood pressure throughout the night, why you would have a heart attack at night, okay? And to add to this, there is one question which is kind of counterintuitive. Why is high blood pressure um, good when you exercise, right? Your, your heart rate's going, you know, your, your blood pr your pressure is increased, right? When you're exercising, but when you're sleeping, like why is high blood pressure bad? Hi why is hypertension bad? Why is that bad for sleep apnea? Like most people think, oh, it's probably fine. Like I get up to certain beats per minute when I go for a jog anyway, so what's the difference sleeping at night? Typically, uh, exercise is seen as a good thing because it's controlled and limited, aka you get tired in a sh shorter period of time and your body knows when to start and stop and there's kind of a limit on that. It's a lot harder for your body to try to figure that out when it actually thinks you're dying every night, if you have low oxygen and your body's going through this like death response every single night. To keep it simple, it's kind of like a car. A car is designed to go on the highway at let's say 60 miles an hour, 80 kilometers an hour, whatever, right? That's actually pretty good for the car. Most people will advertise that, oh, I'm selling a car, it's highway miles, right? Highway miles are better. Highway miles are more fuel efficient. Highway miles uh, help clear the carbon buildup in your pistons, right? So highway miles are good. Just like how exercise is good. It's controlled, it's a short commute most of the time. You know, it makes sense. Sleep apnea is like driving your car 100 miles an hour or 200 kilometers an hour. 
something that your car engine is not built for. To make matters worse, it's like accelerating super hard, then braking, and then gas, and then braking, and then gas, and then braking. Yes, in both scenarios, the engine's on, it's warmed up, but it's a lot different. The engine's gotta go at some point, and the same thing with a heart. Okay, let's go to the body now. There's a few different things, weight gain, cravings, um, urination or nocturnia, which is peeing at night, low sex drive and sleepiness. Okay, so let's go through a few. The slogan that I have for the body is, never let them know your next Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. If you guys heard that, that's my cat Nala and uh, Every day she will bring me this elf and then she will do kind of five minutes of chanting. No more, no more elf, no more. Put the elf down. Okay. Um, okay, so the slogan I got for the body is never let them know your next move because your body can literally do anything. With weight gain, what happens is because of the sleep apnea, it's increasing your stress hormones. Stress hormones such as cortisol help retain food. Fat. It's the same idea as cavemen were in a stress environment. They, they don't want to shed fat, they want to keep fat, right? It's the same thing. So if you're noticing weight gain and you don't know why, it could be sleep apnea. Now, a lot of people think that sleep apnea is a cause or a side effect from being overweight. However, those with a smaller throat, larger tongue, just jaw shape, are more likely to have sleep apnea, which makes them have cortisol every day, which makes them retain weight. So it's actually oftentimes reversed. You have sleep apnea first, you don't know, you gain weight, that makes sleep apnea way worse. Then you go to the doctor and they say it's because you've gained weight, okay? A lot of people have sleep apnea first and gain weight because of it. They just don't know because when they were 12, they were always a bigger kid, but actually they had sleep apnea the whole time. So um, that's one thing, weight gain. Next thing is cravings. Just like the brain, how your body wants to get energy elsewhere or save it elsewhere, maybe you can control your emotions, but you can't control your cravings because your brain wants fast energy quickly. That's why you crave the sugar sweets, the chips, the starches, the carbs, because your brain is desperate for fast energy and quick, easy to metabolize energy, and it's not getting that through sleep, so it's gonna try to get that through candy. Okay, next thing is nocturia. This is a very interesting one. So when you have high pressure in the heart, your heart releases a hormone called ANP. ANP helps lower blood pressure. But what ANP also does is it helps excrete urine from your kidneys because of how it processes salt. And now it's kind of a complicated process. We're gonna skip over that. But what you need to know is that if you are peeing at night, you might have sleep apnea and it's not a prostate issue. I've talked to many, many, many doctors over the course of working in the sleep apnea world and you wouldn't believe how many doctors, and I'm talking sleep doctors, tell me that their patients were misdiagnosed for prostate issues and were on prostate medication when in reality they actually had sleep apnea. Your kidneys are literally excreting more urine all night long because of the ANP that's released in your heart to lower your blood pressure, okay? So maybe you don't have a prostate issue. Next thing is low sex drive. Sleep apnea tremendously affects your testosterone or estrogen balance in women. So if you have low sex drive, could be a cause. And the last and final kind of minute point of a symptom of sleep apnea is you are sleepy. Notice how I save that to the end. It's one of many, many side effects. A lot of people will actually find themselves not sleepy at night and only sleepy in the day because at night their body is stressed out because it doesn't know if it's gonna be able to breathe, so it's not sleepy. In the day, it has no energy because you didn't sleep, so you're sleeping in the day. Or just don't have the extra energy to go out and go for a run or go to exercise or go to the grocery store, just feeling kind of dead, burnt out, if you will. That's more of the tired most people feel. Okay, that is it for side effects of the sleep apnea. I know it was long, but you're watching the CPAP store. I ramble. What you gonna do? Honestly, I just wanna make sure everyone is like crystal clear with this stuff. So many doctors are just say, 
You know, are you sleepy? Oh, not? Oh, you pee in the night? Here's some prostate medication. At the end of the day, it's good to know the stuff yourself and I hope it helped even though it was kind of long. Take care, guys.